Welcome to section 4, Urban Design App. In this video we will learn about anchors in AR Core and proceed to implementing frame raycast method to place our platform element in the scene. We are in a new Unity project. Let's first import AR Core package into our project from Google Developers website. If you're on Mac OS, go to Quick Start for iOS. Both documentations provide step-by-step -step tutorials. As we can see, Cloud Anchor is compatible with Android and iOS. Note that if you develop for iOS, you also need to install Unity ARKit plugin that can be downloaded from Unity's Bitbucket. We will work with Android AR Core implementation, trying not to keep it too Android specific. You will notice slight differences in the code when working on iOS build, but they should not cause major confusion. I'm sure you will deal with it just fine. In case you don't, search for tips on the forums. To spawn our objects, we need to understand the core methods from a script in Hello AR example scene. Go ahead and open Hello AR controller script. AR core's understanding of the space deepens over time. Inside the example script, we can inspect a clever technique that Google applied to make sure tracking of the digital objects stay as precise as possible. It ties in to the further part of the project. The key word is an anchor. Anchor is a point in a physical space that AR Core API establishes as a reference point. The more anchors your space can supply, which is affected by how distinct and well lit the environment is, the higher the quality of the tracking. In AR Core SDK, which we will be using throughout this section, objects such as Andy in Hello AI example scenes are attached to the anchor game object rather than the track plane object itself. We can also observe that feature point is a relevant hit point for anchor tracking. Let's create a new scene and a script to develop our anchor platform. Our process of scripting will not be very different from how we worked in AR Foundation and we can simply extract a few core elements from Hello AR Controller Script. Note we need to make sure to include Google AR Core namespace in our class. We are expecting a single tap on the screen. Let's create an if statement checking the touch count. Inside the block, we can declare our touch and initiate it as well as trackable hit, which is an AR equivalent of Unity's Raycast hit. We will use both in this section. So to check for hits against objects tracked by AR Core, we need to declare trackable hit flags. We will call it Raycast filter as it was introduced in Hello AR Controller. As a shortcut, you can just initiate trackable hit flags dot default, which includes both plane within polygon and feature point with surface normal, basically anything that is appropriate for placing objects. Before proceeding to raycasting, let's check for a touch phase began. That is whether the user touched the screen. We will write more phase blocks in the next video when we want to manipulate spawned objects. AR core frame is a snapshot of the session status. Now we can check for frame raycast using touch positions on two dimensional matrix along with raycast filter and see if there is a hit. If so, we will use hit pose that translates trackable hit into unity coordinates. For stability of tracking, we will follow Google guidelines and create an anchor, then instantiate an object that will be a child of the anchor. Hence, we refer to its transform. Let's declare a private serialized field for the floor prefab we will use. This is enough to spawn an object. However, let's perform a check to see if the AR camera has found a surface in the first place and has sufficient tracking. To do that, let's declare a list of detected planes. The procedure is similar to how it works in the detected plane generator script if you are interested to inspect it in detail. There is one plane per surface detected, so there will be one on your floor, another on your desk, wall, and so on. In the update function, we will look for new trackables, in this case, planes. If we detect the surface, we can debug, log it if you're using instant preview with your AR core enabled phone. Unfortunately, the in-editor debugging system still happens to behave unreliably, so you might want to print a message to a GUI, which makes sense for the app end user anyway. I much prefer using TextMesh Pro for the default Unity UI text, so I will include TM Pro namespace in the script and declare TextMesh Pro new GUI object. Now we can introduce three text feedback assignments. Scanning, place the platform once we have reliable tracking and we can clear the text field once the platform has been spawned. 
We could also create a bool and place our instantiate statement inside of it to make sure we spawn just one platform. Once this happens, we can flip the bool. Save the script. Now back to the editor, we just need to use AR call default prefab to control the session and the AR camera. We can delete the main camera. We can treat AR core device similarly to AR session origin in AR foundation. In the example scenes, you can observe AR device being responsible for visualizing planes and point clouds. Let's add our script to the AR core device. We would first want to establish our construction plane, which later on will become our cloud anchor. We will now make a prefab out of a plane, decide on its size and material. Please adjust these to your preferences. For example, feel invited to use whichever shape of the platform you prefer. By no means does it have to be a square plane. Almost forgot about our text element. I will import TMP Essentials. It gets smoothly integrated into the build via Package Manager. Don't forget to add the text object in the inspector or use a tag to assign it on a wake or start method in our script. If you are deploying for Android, remember to enable AR Core and disable multi threaded rendering. I will stick to landscape orientation as we deployed the apps previously. This way, it will be easier to see the whole platform and manipulate objects. If you are deploying from ARKit, you will need to build the Xcode project from Mac OS. Otherwise, you will get well known CocoaPods issue when deploying onto iOS. Watch out for those pods. We can test the app now. If you are using Instant Preview, you can just launch the app in the editor. Alternatively, just build the app onto your phone, which we will do now. We see the text feedback, and once AR Core detects a surface, we see a message changing. We can now place the platform by tapping on the screen. In this video, we learned how AR Core anchors work, created the foundation of our script, which we will be developing in the next lessons.